tell me why are we emphasizing image acquisition and all of these steps and ticks, tips and tricks so much? Yeah, so as we briefly allude to, it really is the foundation, right? It all starts with a good image quality so you can make use of it. Um, and I really want uh, everyone to pay close attention to this and not take for granted. Like a common um, uh, feedback that we get is like, oh, I'm very interested on, on image interpretation or this or that. I say, well, first, you need to acquire quality image in order to, to interpret anything. Uh, and the other aspect is that uh, the OCT uh, software evolution relies on good image quality. So you're going to really capitalize on the auto segmentation, the so-called artificial intelligence of the software by providing the software quality image. With quality image, you're going to get a free looming, best looming ever. You're going to have a calcium segmentation. Okay. After the stent, you're going to have a stent expansion on the fly uh, without needing to, to touch anything. Uh, so that's where I think more emphasis needs to be put on image acquisition because it's the foundation for, for everything. Mm -hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. I always say, go slow to go fast. Yes. You're, it, you're itchy to use all of the features, but unless the foundation is right, you're not really going to get the full benefit from the software. That's right. So talking about the software, one of the things that it does is walk you through what we at Abbott call the four P's, position, purge, puff, and pullback. Talk to me a little bit about each of those steps uh, through the image acquisition process. Sure. So by position, we mean the lens location, the radio opaque uh, lens location in relation to your region of interest, right? So um, if I'm interested on, on the mid LED, for example, this, my lens needs to be distal to that mid LED lesion in order for me to scan for possible landing zone, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't necessarily need to do to be positioned all the way to the apex because I'm kind of wasting time to reach my uh, region of interest. Right. So you want to be past your lesion by a good 10, 15 millimeters so you can assess for a good landing zone. So we have our position, the next step is going to be to purge. What are we looking for or looking at during that purge process? Sure. So, so the software really make it easy for you because the screen is going to be there. It's going to be zooming on the actual catheter. Remember that what you have on this catheter is a very tiny uh, 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 fiber optics and, and a, it's a lot of empty space that needs to be filled by contrast. Mm -hmm. So this is your small 3cc syringe that uh, is 100% of dye. When you go live, you already did that purge outside the table, you saw the drips, mm -hmm. so you de-air the catheter and you fill with dye. That's before going on the body, right? right. Then you go live. If you see blood there, please talk with yourself, make sure that did we really purge this catheter? Mm -hmm. Because the last thing you want to do is now start purging and injecting air, right? But uh, if you can validate or if you did yourself, yes, I saw the drips there, is the air, and there is some blood around, then it's just a quick push here on the syringe. It doesn't take a half a second to clear that blood that is next to the lens. So after we purge, the next step is to puff. What are we doing or looking for during that puff section? Yeah, so I have a, a modified version of the puff. <laughs> <laughs> so the original version of the puff is going live on the OCT and look at the OCT and asking the first position to actually inject some dye mm -hmm. through the guiding and see if you achieve clearance. So I prefer my version of the puff 
is to look at angel, don't look at the OCT, and utilize one or two cc's of dye just to confirm that along my final position of the catheter, I didn't disengage my guiding catheter, right? I want to make sure, remember, guiding, 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 because the more selective you are, the better is going to be your pullback uh, image quality. And then you just said pullback, which is our final step. So yeah. talk to me about the pullback step and how does that differ based on whether you're doing manual or automatic? Yeah, so, so, so I think the, the pullback is just because it's cool on the four piece, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's really a process that uh, uh, it comes by itself on that sequence that we described before, right? Is cine, inject, pullback or trigger or whatever command you want to do if you are doing manual trigger. Mm -hmm. If the setup is auto trigger, mm -hmm. the only thing you need to do is ask for cine, mm -hmm. inject, as soon as the contrast hit the lens is going to trigger the pullback. So there is no action related mm -hmm. with the, the fourth P. Right. Right. So Dr. Bezerra, when we're talking about image acquisition, the injection portion is really key to getting a good image. And what I find myself personally struggling with sometimes is when I have a new user, whether it's a physician, a tenured staff member, or a new staff member, it can be really difficult to describe to them how much force they actually need to inject with. How would you describe the injection process to a newer OCT user? Yeah, so uh, great point. Um, first, I think I would recommend that uh, you work with uh, fewer technicians that do this more often, or having the physician doing the, the injection himself and, and learn and fine tuning. Remember, uh, every coronary is going to have its own physiology, uh, blood pressure, speed of flow. So you're going to need to adjust a little bit, almost patient by patient. But what you need is a very good opacification of the vessel mm -hmm. and homogeneous opacification. That sometimes requires like a vigorous push on the syringe. Sometimes it doesn't because that that patient has uh, low microvascular resistance or, 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 or is hypotensive, whatever is the situation that uh, you're going to run out of dye too fast. Mm -hmm. Remember, your magic number is two seconds. You need good opacification of your region of interest for two seconds, mm -hmm. right? So that's the thing that you're going to need to fine tune <laughs> in a sense that a uh, if it's going too easy, if you have like a, just a sake of a, of, a, of a comparison, like if you have a eight French guide versus six French guide, it's much easier for you to empty a 10 cc syringe in an eight French guide. Right. Right? So you're not going to be as forceful on an eight French guide as you are on a six French guide. So think as I need good opacification of the vessel for two seconds. And that's how you're gonna to need to dial your, your injection. I wanna go back, um, you know, we're talking about the injection process here, and we know automatic trigger, trigger as soon as it senses clearance, it's gonna pull back. But manual trigger, that's up to the operator or whoever they're, you know, instructing scrubbed in at the table with them to mm -hmm. trigger that pullback. How do you know when to trigger your pullback on manual. Okay, so if you opt for the manual mode, again, your eye is gonna be on the angel screen, mm -hmm. not on the OCT, and as soon as you see that column of dye getting close to your lens, you're gonna trigger. Right before it hit your lens would be the perfect trigger because you already position your lens intentionally more distal from your region of interest and and you are not wasting any dye so you have that nicely formed column of dye proximal to your lens that's the moment to, to trigger and okay. optimize so 
just to make sure I'm understanding you're looking at the angio and you're looking right for that contrast right before it hits the lens. That's right. And when you see that, you know, to, let's say, how many millimeters would you say before the lens? It, it, it's a really a fraction of seconds. Fraction of right? seconds. So, so you see that that corner of the eye is going to hit the lens, you trigger. And, 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 and the software is going to tell you if, if, if you did it right or not. Like if, if you ask me what would be the ideal situation, you have a, just a few frames with some residual blood and then it's perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. That means that you are really optimized your dye. Okay, so say um, for some reason, just to think of different scenarios, we're not looking at the angio and someone's looking at the OCT screen. Would you say then, as soon as they start to start to see some clearance in that cross-sectional view, that would be the time to trigger if we're viewing the OCT screen instead of the angio? I think that would be a good equivalent. Okay. Um, um, again, I, I, I would recommend to prioritize the angio, yep. uh, but um, that's, that's an option. We've talked a lot about different features that Ultrion 2.0 has, and one of the great features, especially starting out with OCT, is the angio co-registration. What do we need to be doing during the image acquisition process to ensure we get a co-registration x-ray image pulled in that is useful to us you know, during the case? The, the core registration is based on the assumption that uh, the software should create a center line. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have too much of overlap between vessels, that's going to make uh, that center line creation very difficult. Uh, uh, so your, your ideal uh, projection should lay out uh, minimum overlap between vessels. And, um, and that should be a, a small number of uh, clicks to create that center line and often it works pretty well. Do you typically take your OCT run in the same image that you want to do the procedure in or do you move the II around? What's your algorithm there? I, I think that's the, the ideal scenario because um, then you are truly relying on position your stand uh, looking at the same projection with the advantage of a digital co-registration. I'm emphasizing digital co-registration here because you can always skip these steps of co-registration and still follow the, the lens market on, on your angel. The limitation with this is that the frame rate of OCT is much faster than your angel frame, right? So what you're gonna see is that uh, your next angel frame, your OCT lens mark already move a lot on the vessel. Uh, in order for you to be more precise on the core registration, let's say, oh, I wanna identify my proper landing zones and I don't have a good uh, uh, a side branch to, as a reference, is, is to add this digital co-registration and then it's going to follow a speed that is, is, is much more, uh, 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 you can relate with your angel frame. So with co-registration, we know it's really important to stay on the cine pedal until the system prompts you to step off. Otherwise, you're not going to pull in that full angio image and you won't have that to reference either for co-registration and procedure planning, uh, but also with Ultrion 2.0, there's the new dynamic angio feature um, and co-registration interacts with that. Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on that new feature with Ultrion 2.0. Yeah, it's interesting that um, we do um, all this planning based on OCT, but then you need to be back on angio uh, to either deploy your stent or post dilate your stent, right, it's all live angel. So uh, what the software is trying to do is, is make that transition more seamless, right? So you do your planning, you have your roadmap in one side of the screen, and then you have a live angel that actually uh, has some imaging uh, post-processing that helps uh, uh, highlight better the stent. 
so you can be more precise.